Okay, we just have a couple of more things here on this list. Righteous judgment. Mm -hmm. Okay, should we judge? Judge not. That's literally the name of this title. We've been doing definitions because it's helpful, but this is the actual point. Do we judge? To judge or not to judge? What is righteous judgment and how do we do it? Right. We we, we don't judge for incorrect uh, uh, appropriation of, of where, where we're coming at. If we're doing it inconsistently, if we're doing it to uh, uh, poke our, our fellow brother, then yes, we do not judge. We do not condemn. That That's the word being used here uh, for uh, Matthew 7. And, uh, you know, uh, everywhere uh, back in the 90s, you saw John 316 being held up in stadiums and everything like that. I think Matthew 7 is the most widely known scripture now because uh, so many people yeah. have left the church and have brought just judge not. It's not even the whole yeah. one that you'd yeah. be not judged. Come on, at least finish finish verse one. They don't even have the rest of it true. there. So yeah, it's true. But but look at what what the the rest of it is in context. It's talking about uh, you, you know you see a speck in your brother's eye, but you don't notice the log in your own. But then it says, "Hey, you hypocrite! First, take the log out of your own eye, then you can see clearly to then help your brother." So yes, we we once once we judge ourselves appropriately and and by what standard, scripture of course, we take it out and then we go to our brother and say, "Hey." Uh, I, I, I think, uh, continuationism might not be the best thing. Let me, let's, let's have coffee and sit down and, and, and do this. Right. Now, again, a log versus a spec is continuation a problem. Yeah, it can be, you know, if, right. if you believe that God can reveal, uh, a, a continued word that, that, uh, after, you know, uh, revelation, uh, right. insert Special number revelation. here, mm-hmm. then, then you continue on with your own writings that you've got from God. Uh, you know, th- th- that's an issue that, that that's a discussion. Mm-hmm. But uh, within certain traditions, uh, um, there's a belief that at the end times, God, God will will uh, renew things like the gift of tongues, as in languages, and and I, I, you know, not, not even the most uh, strict uh, uh, cessationists would say that God is unable to give someone the ability to know an unknown language. Right. Right. So. Right. So let us let us not be hypocritical in our condemning. But uh, it, uh, let's see. Um, oh, I, I, I lost my notes here. But uh, later on, within this chapter, uh, is fourteen and fifteen, fifteen, sixteen. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, inner, who are inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will recognize them by their fruits. How how will I recognize them by their fruits? How do I see their fruits? Well, I will judge them. Judge them. <laughs> yeah, yep. and in in yep. the sense that I'm not I'm not can I'm not condemning them, but I'm seeing. Comparing what they say to what scripture says, mm-hmm. uh, where is the imbalance? Is it right. is it in me or is it in them or am I misunderstanding? And and you have you have this through, throughout the New Testament too. Uh, uh, Jude, First uh, Galatians, First Corinthians three. Uh, the, these are these are leaders of the church saying, "Hey, you need to be grounded in objective scripture to know what standards you're going to." Um, uh, come by because like jude is essentially proto-gnosticism that will rip the church for 150 years that will continuously respond to um as as a ch- as a church body and so what are, are we just to then say oh uh if you believe that uh, uh christ is a, a demiurge and he didn't have a physical body and uh you should not procreate and you should deny um uh eating food so that you die at an early age uh, should we just be okay with that and say, "Yep, Christian Orthodoxy, just like uh, the Trinity is, just like uh, the the soul sacrifice of Christ, the equal equal terms?" Or right. are are we using objective standard? That's not we're not condemning. Christ is the one that can condemn, but are we judging appropriately? Are we removing the plank from our own eye and saying, "Oh, I've I've never seen that before." Let me see if I'm in error or if there's a reason I haven't seen that before. All right. So judge yourself first yeah. and then, then you can go forward and, and, right. and help your brother yeah. out. Like basically yeah. it's a helping your brother out kind of thing. Right. So if, if I'm I think if, there, if your first response is to say, I have a problem with that instead yes. of saying, oh, yeah. Okay. Right. You know, which, which is the immediate reaction to take a breath or to, and search for scripture and see, see what, what you might be missing, or is it to immediately respond? Right. Yeah. 
definitely anytime I've immediately responded especially online I've regretted it so <laughs> yeah I learned I learned to take uh take a deep breath and and as friendly Calvinist once told us sometimes it's okay to wait a full 24 hours until you respond but mm-hmm. I think the um helpful example of this would be if you are let's say that you are a particular discernment person you're out there and you're writing discernment blogs but in your own personal life you're not saved and you're a complete womanizer or whatever it is you want to say and you're writing discernment blogs against Todd Bentley this is not judging righteously right like you are doing the very thing that you are judging somebody else for that would be um judging somebody for something you've already done you haven't taken that that of course, that would be an example of non-brothers helping non-brothers. So maybe that's not helpful. Um, maybe I should pick something a little bit less ex- exaggerated. Yeah. But if I'm, uh, let's say I'm teaching a small group. I'm teaching a small group and I have men and women in my small group. Now, I am going through scripture bit by bit because that's how I would do it if I was doing this. And there's small, there's in a small group, there's a couple of husbands in here. I'm not supposed to be teaching these husbands scripture but I'm doing this, but then on my free time, I am telling everybody that will listen that what Beth Moore is doing is just apprehensible. Um, so apprehensible, reprehensible, apprehensible is a different word. <laughs> <laughs> reprehensible. Okay. So see that, that would be like an example of something where I need to not be doing this very thing before I am addressing it with somebody else. And yeah. so it, it's helpful to view it from a perspective of what are you struggling with in your own personal sanctification in we, we tend to be more aware of that in other people whenever we see that kind of behavior so if i'm being a total brat to my husband and then i see a woman you know out out and about and she's just being a monster i tend to be like well at least i'm not that bad you know yes <laughs> see it could be worse that's not a yes. good way to... that's why people like reality tv yeah. it's so easy it, for yeah. comparison good great yeah. point yeah yeah there, there was a uh, uh one time that um i, I was uh, at work and uh this this older much older gentleman uh had a uh, some sticker that was like uh you know, if, if, if you want to keep your money, don't be married. I, I don't remember what it was essentially, <laughs> but that's essentially what it said. And he right. shows it to me. He goes, ah, what do you think of that? I go, I, I don't know. I love my wife. And he's like <laughs> taking it back and he's like, well, uh, well, I do too. And I go, oh yeah, right? <laughs> just, just that, just that. And he just puts it in his pocket and like, you know, gotta think about it now. <laughs> yeah. Do, do, do I love my wife? I, I right. love telling people, I, I, I just had a conversation with this young 25 year old kid about, he, he's worried about, he, he, he may be wasting his life about uh, uh, waiting for somebody. And I'm just like, I get to talk about my relationship. That's, I'm, you know, proof of God exists because I am married. So right. I'm, I'm yes. just heap upon coals upon his head there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, seriously. I love that. That is such a <laughs> I have I get so excited. I feel so bad. The whole like half of our conversation that I had on the bar com like the bar podcast when he had us on was like me just talking about my husband. And at the end, Dwayne was literally like, I, I wish I could talk to your husband. I, I, <laughs> I this guy and I was like, I know he should be the one doing these podcasts. But um yeah, no, I totally that's why I totally get like I, I'm seriously like God God is already blessed us more than we deserve but it's a good point to show like are we are we um are we really out there saying these things like the sticker what would be the sticker that you would be showing people of all the stickers (laughs) of all the stickers like or what are you doing like what what are you seriously doing (laughs) showing people and and do we know that we are hypocrites who are are uh, uh, daily picking up our cross and sacrificing ourselves on a daily basis yep. and, and, and staying away from things that we will stumble in or that will cause us to stumble. Uh, um, the, the, uh, James one says, uh, know this, my beloved brothers, let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger for the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness and receive with meekness, the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. That's what we should continuously point back to is the scripture. Yes, I'm a hypocrite. Why? Because I am comparing myself to the perfect word of yep. Yep. a righteous judge who, who has no evil in him. And yes, I, I am I am hypocritical every moment of my life. And 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 I it's it's only God through his sovereign grace and power that I am able to to slay the old man and put on the new man. 
but you really shouldn't, uh, you know, uh, uh, you shouldn't drink grape juice. It should only be wine. (laughs) Third tier, third tier, (laughs) non-essential. Yeah, no, that's really a helpful example too. Like if we're comparing ourselves to the people who are, or doing things like that, or making those kind of examples, you're going to be, it's going to be a lot easier to be puffed up. Like your pride is a lot easier to puff up out in the world. But whenever you compare yourself to that scripture, it's, you're you're just, you're going to be mauled over by humility every time you do it. So that's a, that's a really good example of what we should be doing instead of comparing ourselves to the reality. I like that. That reminds me of Martin Luther, my favorite Martin Luther quote. Uh, we need to hear the gospel every day because we forget it every day. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Like, I love that we, quote. For, uh, we ourselves, we forget it. We're a clean slate when we wake up or whatever. <laughs> that's they say. that's <laughs> why I try re- to stay reboot. asleep as long as possible. Because if I sleep <laughs> through the day, then I'm just slothful. And that's one sin. So. Yeah. That's right. It's only one instead of all the rest. Yeah. But it, it, we, 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 we talked about this uh, before the podcast started. I don't know. It depends on when you're going to push the, the play button for this. But when, when we look at the Old Testament, but why aren't we just given a, a list of rules only? We're given people's lives who, who fell, who, uh, who were done, uh, who, who did inappropriate, ungodly, the worst things. King David broke all Ten Commandments in a single, uh, in a single bound. And yet he goes and, and, and says, who is this man? That has stolen the sh- the sheep the the the, the single person's uh, single sheep. I will go and kill that man. And Nathan cuts to the heart and says, "That man is you." And I know that because God has told me. Here's scripture, and it's boom, completely. I am undone. I'm a, a man of unclean lips, as as yeah, Isaiah six yeah. says. Like th- that when when Isaiah the the prophet stands before Christ on the throne and 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 uh, is, is shown his his power and might, he he cannot stand. He, he knows, even even with the mouth of, the, of a prophet, he has unclean lips. That's what we should be. And we should give uh, uh, that same type of, of loving uh, balance to the people that we interact with. And when, when heresy is heresy, we need to call that out because uh, people's souls depend on hearing, yeah. hearing the gospel. We, yes, it, it's, it's always based on, on God and, and his sovereignty. But God enters into a relationship with us where we should present the most accurate gospel as possible, and we should want to preserve His Word. And the the, the aberration should be, oh well, uh, you know, uh, Mormonism is weird, right? Be, be be like gods. Well, that's clearly not Christianity. Not welcome, brothers. Welcome, come on over. Right. Uh, yeah. If, if if you don't pl- practice polygamy, uh, you'll be damned to hell. As a man, I really enjoy that. So uh, yeah, I will support that. <laughs> I don't see how any, this is, this is totally off track, but I have said this for years. I don't understand why any man would want more than one husband. Or I one know. Wife. So, like, are you, have you, Hot mess have, have you ever been married? Are you sure that you yeah. want more than one wife? Because I am all, I'm like, I'm a lot to handle my poor yes. husband. Like he spent the whole weekend taking me to museums. Like how are you going to do that with more than one wife? That would be just terrible. Oh man. No. At, at least with cults, they break you down. So you're not an individual anymore. Then, then they're more <laughs> oh. easily manipulated. Yeah. Then you just have now. Five of the exact same. <laughs> that's a good point. I didn't think about that. But I do think that that's really helpful that you just showed exactly the balance that we're talking about. Yes. We're going to talk about heresy, but also we're, we're, we're supposed to be, we're supposed to be balanced in this and do it in love.